Dude, why are you not wearing any helmets? Is definitely one of the most frequently asked questions of recent times. Because in the past, the majority of you guys who have been following me already knew the reason why I and many other Nürburgring regulars prefer not to wear a helmet. But once in a while, a video pops up, goes trending on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram, and then the question from non-car people come in, why are you not wearing helmet? And today, dear comrades, Good morning, welcome back to the channel and to the Nürburgring. I'm going to give you more of a background info. It's something I wanted to do in the past, but then my best friend Robert actually made a video like that three years ago, and now it's been three years ago. So let's explain why, yeah, we are not always wearing a helmet. So first of all, what is a helmet? Helmet is of course designed to protect your head. Where does it come from? From the early days in motorsport, of course, where you had the open seaters and still the open seated cars that you want to avoid birds and flies and stones or wheels flying into your head and damaging it. Later on also in touring cars that are equipped with roll cages. However, nowadays, most of the modern cars, they have very high safety standards. They, it's mandatory to have them equipped with airbags, curtain airbags, not only the frontal airbags, even the feet airbags, lots of safety systems, which make actually application of helmet not only useless, but also dangerous. So let's hop in first in the BMW 218, which has completely stock interior. I'm going to show you the scenarios that happen when you have an impact and how it may literally and figuratively, pun intended, may impact you when you have an accident. So first of all, the 218 with the stock interior. Adrian, you're gonna keep on rolling or you're gonna get the tripod? What do you want? Tripod for sure. Okay. A car with a stock factory interior and factory belts. You all know it, the three-point belt, you buckle it in and it's supposed to hold you back in case of an impact. So when impact happens, what happens? The belt is actually tightening up. It's not stopping you completely, but there is, I would say, a couple of millimeters stretching so make sure that there is not going to be an instant G-force breakdown that you're gonna break your ribs. So it's tensioning up, it's making your body kinda rotate and thereby you will be meeting an airbag here in the best case. And then you go back, also very important, you go back and that's kinda it. Unless of course there's a rollover or a more severe impact. So important to know the g-forces that are being applied now what happens if i'm wearing a helmet so let's quickly put this on top in case of a helmet the same thing will happen i will move forward and meet the airbag which will come up and probably even push the helmet back and i go against this well against the headrest but because the helmet is sticking out on the rear it will probably create extra whiplash that will definitely damage well can cause potential actually a lot of damage to the neck muscles over here moreover because with additional weight to your head when you have a high g-force impact it overstretches your neck but since you have a modern car of the last 20 years, the majority of cars that we are driving on this channel that are related to the actual questions of wearing a helmet, you have airbag here, you have curtain airbag. There is nothing that your head needs to be protected from, but the potential neck damage of overstretching it through the front by the frontal impact and also later by whiplashing it to the back and against the headrest, this can cause a lot of damage. And in order to uh, pre prevent this type of damage, engineers have come up with a so-called hand and neck safety system or neck restraint system, the so-called HANS. Adrian, can I give, oh, actually I have it here. Oh, look how easy it is. So this is what you put on your neck, around your neck. Then you put the helmet on, you clip it here on top, and then it works. The issue, however, you need to have a four point seat belt that goes on top of Hans to keep it strapped in the position and to make sure that your helmet will not go forward or your hat will not go forward and avoid neck injury. For that, to demonstrate to you, uh, we will go to a car that actually has a fully prepared interior uh, where we can use all this safety equipment. But the short takeaway, in the modern car, helmet, in my perspective, it's not something I'm telling you, and also in perspective of many other people, 
without proper hunt system, with all the additional safety systems that you have stuck installed in a car, it can do significantly more harm than good. Now, some people say maybe you should wear an open face helmet. Of course, we have that as well. But again, the issue is adding extra weight on the top and yeah, not really uh, helping you from, uh, from avoiding injuries, but actually creating more. So let's go to a more modified car and see how it would work there. We are now in our Seat Leon Cupra 300 race car that I raced last year. And like any proper race car, first of all, that you can see it has a roll cage. A very hard point on the track that you do not want to be hitting with your head. So for me, rule number one is whenever a car is equipped with a roll cage, always wear a helmet because it can potentially, well, cause a lot of um, damage to you. Actually, as a matter of fact, one of the few people that have passed away on the Nürburgring in the recent, I would say, five years, I think it was actually 2017 to be precise, was a rollover with BMW M3 and the passenger was not wearing a helmet and cracked open his skull, unfortunately. And the driver was actually totally fine. We're gonna talk about rollovers in a bit, but first of all, what do we see here? Apart from the roll cage, it also comes with a bucket seat. So a bucket seat not only helps you to keep yourself stick in position, to be able to control the car better, to have better uh, perception of what's happening with the chassis because you're really stuck into it and you, you're, you don't have too much body movements. In addition, remember the swooping back actually you have extra space in the back, so you can actually, when you're wearing a helmet, it, fu it functions well with your head as a headrest. So I'm quickly gonna demonstrate that to you by putting the helmet on. So, when I'm wearing a helmet, it's actually perfect right now. So that's very good. Moreover, the car comes with a four-point seat belt with the harnesses that we can now use in combination with the hunt system. So you put it on, you use the clips, like three, two, one, ta-da. And belts go over the top. Always make sure that the middle central buckle is in the bottom because otherwise in case of impact, even right now, it's not perfectly in the bottom, in case it's too much to the top, in case of an impact, you can break your ribs. So, but now we are fully strapped into the car, really strapped into the car. In the case of movement, these things are holding my helmet back. So I cannot overstretch my neck and cause potentially neck injury or worse. Now, the thing is, is that your head movement therefore is quite restricted. So you can look in the mirrors, but you cannot really go over your shoulder. For me, it's not that much of an issue, but because of that, the law of the road law of Germany, and which also means that tourist session, the public session Nürburgring, where you have the road uh, rules where they apply, they say, therefore, you're not allowed to wear a Hans system in tourist traffic because it restricts your head movement. So Hans is automatically banned. So therefore, you can only wear a helmet, which will potentially cause more injury to your neck in case of an impact. Alternatively, of course, if you have a roll cage, I would prefer neck injury, neck injury over cracking my skull open on top. Now, I know some of you might say it already. Nowadays, you have so-called Simpson hybrid hunt system that you put around your waist and you actually don't need uh, four-point harnesses or six-point harnesses. And this is a very good topic, good point. And we spoke with the head marshal of Nürburgring recently and he said, this is then, yes, it is allowed, but you need to then check if everyone can make the head movement because it's not as restrictive as traditional hunt system. But the Nürburgring still just says like, yeah, no, these are not allowed because you don't want to encourage people to go this fast that they actually need it. I'm just sending the message. I'm not uh, I'm in favor or against it. Um, it's, it's a very quite delicate discussion, but yeah, hybrid hunt system, it's something that you could wear and outside of Nürburgring or outside of tourist uh, traffic. 
In addition, there are other things that you need to consider. Not only Hans system is essential to make helmet work. In addition, as already showed to you previously, a good bucket seat with the ability to position your hat against it is very important. Also, set of harnesses. On top, if you're having this combination of bucket seats and harnesses, you have to have a roll cage for optimal working. If you do not have a roll cage and you have extra helmet on top, which is here, and in case of a rollover and the roof is going to be smashed inside and you are strapped in, it's going to press your head downwards and again, most likely you are not going to make it. On a stock car, however, the stock seats, and if you're not strapped in, I've seen cases of rollovers where passenger would have, well, have injury on his head because the roof would come down and it would smack him, but he would actually be pushed downwards and survive the accident. I'm not saying that it means that it's absolutely safe, but in case of being strapped in and having a rollover without a cage, there are actually a significantly less chance that you are going to make it. So, the, as you can see, it's a quite a long story. There are a lot of variables. We can also say like, oh, a friend of mine was driving without a seatbelt and he crashed into a tree, flew through the front window and a car caught fire. And if he was wearing a seatbelt, he would have been burned alive. And I think we should go this far. Uh, but hopefully you understand that uh, it's not like uh, it's not black and white it's a quite a delicate question that's why i'm just sharing my experiences with you uh, and actually sharing my thoughts and at the end of the day everyone is responsible for themselves what to do wear a helmet or not to wear a helmet if you are wearing a helmet make sure your passenger is wearing a helmet and um, yeah that you're hopefully having all the additional safety equipment to make the helmet work and not cause more damage to you than it is. So in short, let me quickly give you a brief summary. Is it a stock car and I don't have to wear a helmet? I'm not going to wear a helmet. Do I have to wear a helmet because it's a track day or any other regulations? Well, I will have to wear a helmet, but I will try to slow down to not to make sure that in case, well, reduce of high speed impact incidents, I will try to reduce the chance. Is it the car with the roll cage? Doesn't matter which safety equipment we have, I will be wearing a helmet because I do not, me personally, I do not want to split my skull open against tough roll cage. Is it coming with four point harnesses? I will try to use my hunt system, um, even if it is maybe not having a roll cage. This is a risk that I will take in case of a rollover, but I know that the risk of having a rollover is actually smaller than risk of having a neck injury and in, in even very slightest impact. And speaking of crashes, you all know that I have actually quite some experience with crashing the cars myself in racing in tourist traffic and also being on a passenger. The crashes that I had in racing when I went 120 kilometers per hour straight into a wall to a complete stop with a full racing equipment, there was like I walked out of the car, I had no issue whatsoever. The crash I had with a Cayman where we actually had a very hard impact on the wheel, therefore not on the crash structure, did cause some neck injury to me. And that was even without wearing a helmet. In addition, one more thing that comes up to my mind to uh, visualize to you the importance of having well-trained neck to be able to cope with a helmet. Think of Formula One drivers. They spent lots of time training their neck to withstand high G forces. In addition also, if necessary, high impacts. So we start to talk very much off topic. I hope it gave you insight into why I choose not to wear a helmet in certain cases and in others I am either required by the tragedy organizer or, organizer or other cases. Um, and it's up to you to make your decision, make up your mind. It's not something I'm gonna say you do not wear a helmet. Even when I'm instructing with, uh, with someone else, and it is a fully stock car and the driver is going to say like, hey, I would like to wear a helmet. I, I will express my opinion saying like, hey, this is gonna do you more harm than good. But if you insist on it, sure, I'll take my helmet as well because then I have to wear a helmet if you are wearing a helmet and there is that. So not educating you, kind of explaining just the facts, but you have to make the choice yourself. And at the end of the day, motorsport, it's dangerous and loud, but uh, tourist traffic you just need to enjoy. And um, yeah, if we want to stay super safe, 
just stay at home, you know, because accidents can happen and it's just like, hope you're gonna have the best preparation, best outcome.